to We Don't Have Cookies, where possibilities are possible. Here's your host, Jason Marshall. Hey, everybody. Thanks for downloading the show. It's the first episode of the new year, and I can't wait to start it with my guest today. She's a headlining stand-up comedian who has been all over the world. She's been on various TV and radio shows and is one of the hosts of the comedic psychic podcast, Karen and Kira Can Read. It's Karen Rontowski. How you doing? Good. And pretty soon, I think it's the end of January, I will have my own podcast called Paranormal Karen. I'm looking forward to that. You have a few episodes <laughs> taped, don't you? I do. I have quite a few in. Now I'm getting the artwork done and getting everything in line. And um, yeah, I have a, it's a little creepy though. It's, I don't know. I'm not sure that all of my same regular audience will be, uh, it might get a little scary for them, but I'm, I'm going to do the best I can. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing that. On your Good. latest episode of Karen and Kara Can Read, which is a great podcast. Everybody out there should be listening to that. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> As of right now, the latest episodes were Cookie Party Part 1 and Part 2. So it's fitting that you're here today on We Don't Have Cookies. Exactly. That's the theme. It's all about cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and we still don't have any. They had one <laughs> vegan cookie while I was there. I ate that one vegan cookie. and That was what I had at the party. <laughs> and somebody had to hunt you down to give it to you because you thought it was That's already right. <laughs> That's right. Felicia, I couldn't find it. And then Felicia came in and stopped everything and go, here's the cookie. That's right. But it was worth it. <laughs> well, I've always been a fan of yours. Uh, I've looked you up online on all your social media stuff and things like that. But I never looked you up on IMDb. And for some reason, I guess because you were coming on here today, I decided to do that. And I read that in your 20s, you moved to Las Vegas and was a cigarette girl at Caesar's Palace. I've, oh, yeah. I've never heard that term before. I'm assuming you walked around giving cigarettes to people. <laughs> I did. I did. That was absolutely one of my most favorite jobs in the whole world. And if I, obviously, I have two jobs that I love, but I would have never left that job. Um, you, well, I don't think that, I don't know if they even have them anymore because cigarettes, I think this last time I was there, I asked a cigarette girl what they cost because they were $5 a pack when I was selling them back 25 years ago. Now they're $10, $15 wow. a pack. And I was like, oh my God. But I used to, um, we'd carry around the big case that was in a little teeny skirt and high heels and we would sell <laughs> cigarettes and lighted stuff throughout and i worked at caesar's palace so i was where this was before vegas was like the family place this was when it was like the money place and people would just you know you just make a ton of money selling cigarettes and you'd work in the pit like a rich guy was like hey i'd like a cigarette and we had beepers pagers back then they would page you pit two table 54 and you'd have to run all the way across the <laughs> casino and then it, there you'd stand in your little skirt and say these are compliments of caesar's palace and then he would look you up and down and throw 20 dollars on your tray <laughs> and um it was very, I was like some little punk uh, girl from Pittsfield, Massachusetts that didn't even know how to put her makeup on right. And then I was kind of thrown into that scene. And it was just, it. We somebody wore a pedometer once and we walked, they said we walked over eight miles a day. Wow. And I know in high heels, I don't know how I did that, but I, because I am a, such an active person, like I am moving all the time. I can't sit still. It was the greatest job for me. And, um, I think I met a whole bunch of celebrities. So when you're 20, that's exciting, but I really loved that job. Yeah. I was going to say that sounds like it had to be an amazing job. And I'm sure you got a lot of good stories from that. Probably two. Uh, but, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was culture shock and it was great. And it's w really weird because as of, I think when this comes out January 1st, I'm working at the MGM. So it always was kind of interesting that I was also the cigarette girl at the Riviera and used to work, sell cigarettes at the, um, at the Riviera comedy club there that became the improv. And then I used to work there and it was like all the same people, that were doormen and bartenders when I was a cigarette girl, I come back 15 years later as a comic 
same people. Wow. Say like we like we it was just it was kind of cool. It was like the it was really I got to visit with everyone and um yeah, so it was that's that was a pretty amazing thing for somebody to just get off the boat and do that. It was really fun. <laughs> and it's cool for them too. They must love their job if they're still there 15 years later, right? <laughs> I would hope so or else, but here's the other thing. <laughs> they have the best union in the world. So those people are going to be the richest people ever when they retire. That's a, well, that's one place that I think still stands up like that where I don't know, maybe some of them, I think you didn't even have to work that many days a week, but that was just, I loved that job. I loved it so much. Retirement sounds very nice, whether you're rich or, or <laughs> well, I was going to say poor and that's not true. But <laughs> yeah. I know retirement does I'm not quite. I, I'm kind of excited about my life now, but to slow it down a little and not feel like I had to worry about retirement would be great. Well, I don't think we talked about this last time you were on the show. You've been doing stand up for 20 years or so. What made you decide to incorporate your tarot reading into that? It was sort of just this natural evolution. And I always, you know, everything I do. In fact, I just got off the phone with a friend of mine that's a demonologist, like 10 minutes before I was talking to you. And I don't, uh, it's really a lot that this is my life. Like paranormal Karen is never, it's not an act I put on. Like it's, there's a constant phone call, uh, is, Hey, we think we have fairies in our yard or, you know what I mean? Like it's, or somebody's over here doing ayahuasca or meditation class or, and it was always, I think at that point, somebody was saying how that's your thing is you, you put these two together. My ultimate goal is to have a show that everybody can come to, not even in the paranormal and enjoy uh, funny ghost stories that I tell. And, you know, not like my podcast is actually really paranormal. Like it, it, it might be too paranormal for some people, but hopefully everybody will try it, you know, and that was just part of it. And I can't remember. And I said to my friend Lamont, who is the guy I, I usually, um, now Kara and I do it together at, uh, flappers. And then sometimes like in Halloween, I do it alone with my friend Lamont. And I was like, he and I both work with the crowd very well. And I always thought, you know, if I can lean on you, if I can take a minute to process the cards while you, you know, if someone says, Hey, uh, am I going to get married? I'll process the cards and you say, Hey, what do you do for a living and keep them entertained? And it just turned out to be so much fun that we still do it every year. And if I ever, you know, could fill theaters or when that time comes, it'll be me and him or me and Kara out there doing it. Cause it just, that's the thrill. I love doing material, but when you're really on your feet, that's the most fun. And tarot is part of that. And it just is, it really makes it unique and fun. And the audience takes home something different. So I'm not exactly sure when they merged, but they, it, at some point it was like, just, I think I had a manager and she said, you've got to, these things all have to go together. These things all have to mix together. And it just went that way. And now sometimes on the road, I will read tarot after a show, but clubs are not yet kind of sold on that. They're not sure yet, you know, yeah. they don't know what to make of it. And like, sometimes I'm in Utah, which I think that could be a disaster in Utah. <laughs> you don't want to, you know, start a moral uprising at the wise guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyways, but yeah, so it all it was sort of just, and I used to read after the shows, audience members would come back and I would do readings for them. So it all just was eventually that's where it was going to go. So is that your merch table? Instead of selling you know, t-shirts, you do readings real quick. <laughs> you know, it would, I would love to do that, but I just like, I got hired for a party and the guy's like, how many people can you read in uh, two hours? And I'm like, well, if everybody shows up, I can do everybody for five minutes. That's what he wanted. And it wasn't even, that's not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A good, at a good party, you want to do 10 minutes a person, give people 10 minutes of reading. And even then, so you're getting six people an hour. So it's not a very lucrative. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like when people buy a CD and then they're out the door. So <laughs> <laughs> it pays off in the long run. They, <laughs> they call me at home and I do their readings there. So that's pretty good. <laughs> you just tell everybody. You get one question. It's $20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to keep this to two minutes or less. <laughs> I know. That's exactly it. And go, oh, my God, your future looks awful. Time up. 
Time up. Uh, <laughs> make sure your well, make sure your friend records it on their phone. <laughs> I know. Well, we have this thing when I do parties. I bring a sign up list. You give me your name and your phone number, and I text you when you're on deck. And the guy was so excited, and he got like he signed the whole list up. I go into the place. They finally found a quiet corner before the DJ turned the music real loud. The whole place had no cell service. Oh so God. literally not one person got the test. <laughs> so then people just kept walking up and going, can I do this? And I was like, sure, sure. You go ahead. Go ahead. I thought you so, would just have the DJ read it kind of like bingo numbers. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that would have been even better. One thing I know, I don't ever want to be anywhere where there's a DJ. My, I can't handle that loud noise. And mm. then my mom just called me from her assisted living, and they're going to have a New Year's Eve celebration at 7 o'clock. And she goes, and we're having a DJ. <laughs> and I was like, I don't even know what that means. What do you have with a DJ? <laughs> I think I just came up with the next idea. You could do it at bingo halls. Whoever gets a bingo, they get a tarot reading. Oh, yeah. The, the bingo hall pays you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's your prize. Yes. <laughs> it's a, fun. <laughs> it's funny. I uh, My prices, like when I'm not doing stand-up, when I'm at home and I do it over the phone, my prices are 75 for an hour and 40 for a half an hour, which is not bad and to the market. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like... I saw a woman, she was $300 wow. for 15 minutes, for 15 minutes. Jesus. And I was like, wow, I don't know what information you would give me in 15 minutes that would be worth $300, except where I could find $400. <laughs> and, but I was, I'm just like, I guess, yeah, it's more time consuming. You know, when you think of it in the short version, 75 an hour is good, but I can't do more than four a day. So <laughs> Wow. Just saying it was $300. I was pretty surprised yeah. when you threw in 15 minutes after that. I was already so stunned from the price that didn't yeah. even hit me till later. <laughs> yeah. $300 for the hour. I, you Even that, there's a couple of psychics that do different things. They don't like not tarot things. And my teacher, my teacher is about, a, I think she's 150 an hour and she's phenomenal. And, um, I go back to see her every once in a great while, but even then it's like, Oh, how do I <laughs> squeeze that out? And it's a tax deduction for me to go and learn from these people. But oh, there's a couple good. that are like, yeah, they're like 175 and I just, I, I have to go see them, but you know, there's a couple of them I'm very interested in some information, but I just am, even then I'm like, that's a lot of money to me. Yeah. Maybe I got to start thinking better. <laughs> Maybe I start thinking bigger, like what it's worth. Well, it's not worth it today. Today, the dentist is for worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Before we get too far away from the comedy aspect, I have to ask you this question because I know that you've been to this place a million times. I've heard a lot of ghost sightings at the comedy store. Have you ever had oh. any experiences like that there? I've never had any direct experiences in that's a really weird thing. First of all, most comedy clubs and theaters are haunted. Almost all of them are haunted, period. But, you know, the Hollywood Comedy Store is I'm never comfortable in there, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's a very dark place. It's a very um I'm also not quite their brand of comic. I worked at the San Diego Comedy Store for for years, and I waitressed there. I was a bartender there. I was a comic there. It's really my home club, and that was haunted. But the Hollywood one was just never my scene. And in fact, it's very interesting because it's now the biggest club. Like it, you know, it used to be the Improv, and then it was Laugh Factory. Now this, the Comedy Store is the biggest one. So I've never had experiences there. But man, you know it. When you walk in, really? you know it. And the stories are very, um, there's one guy would uh, go to close up and he'd hear a, like a bang and then come in and all the chairs were stacked on the table. When something like that is going on, there's a lot, that's not just ghosts, that's, um, there's other things there. But also that, I think that whole block, there was some sort of mob um, the, whoever owned that before it was the comedy store was the mob and there's all, so that whole history of that place is very dark. So the history of the land is pretty dark. It's very, um, so there's a lot there and 
and it's pretty much bigger than human hauntings there, I would say. See, that is one of the parts that I've heard as far as stories go was uh, mafia members being there and things like that. But I also heard, I forget who was talking about this. I know Harlan Williams had a story about a year ago about the place, but I heard Sam Kinison is at one of those. I forget which one, though. Uh, haunting it? Probably yeah. the Hollywood Comedy Store. Although I would be surprised if, yeah, well, it certainly could be. Yeah, that's that would make sense. But when you have a, when human ghosts are there, like a Sam Kinison or something like that, it takes a lot of energy for them to actually, people are always like, hey, if there's ghosts, why don't they just step forward and let us see them? Because it takes a lot of energy on their part to do it. And it gets very, um, they feel like they're walking through mud They because it's, you know, we're a lower vibration but he would, you know, being an energetic and charismatic person, probably could come through. But human spirits can't move when you, when objects are moving, like chairs or something like that. You figure about two pounds is about the limit that a human ghost can move. Once you get into chairs and stuff like that, you're kind of in a different. Now you've got something really negative. And I hate I hate to use the word demon because everybody uses it, and there's so much between demon and human ghosts. But once you get people moving chairs and pushing things around, there's probably a lot more in there now. I know when you go in the green room of the belly room, there's a little window, a little area with a window that you go, and it was actually where the when they when the mob used to shoot someone, that was like the sniper point. I would love to actually ghost hunt at the comedy store, but they sort of have wind of how much money they can make. And now Uh, it's pretty, you know, yeah, they're pretty savvy to know you don't just get to come in, but I think it's, it's incredibly haunted. Well, speaking of ghosts, the last time you were on, you did a reading about a weird thing that was happening around my house for a few days. And you said it was being done by a woman who used to live here. I kept trying to steer the conversation to it being my mom, but you kept saying it was a different woman, and I hated hearing that. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) (laughs) But I said on that show that Karen does not lie. She reads what the cards say, whether you want to believe it or not. And I tried so hard to get her to say it was my mom instead of some other lady. (laughs) I've talked about this on the show before, so listeners just bear with me, but I have to tell Karen this. The very next day, my dad came over. And I'm telling him exactly what happened uh, in our conversation. I knew somebody died here before, but I own a pretty decent chunk of land. And there's a, a, a foundation on another side of the creek from my house where an old house used to be. And I just assumed that a guy committed suicide there, right? Ah. So I'm telling my dad this whole spiel that we went through. And he says, I wonder if it's the lady who killed herself here. Oh, and interesting. Yeah. I said, what? I <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I didn't know it was in this house, and I thought it was a guy. And he was like, no, no, it was a woman. And it was incredible how you nailed that, even though I didn't want to believe it at first. <laughs> oh, well, good. Well, that's a, isn't that always funny, though, when someone's like, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you about the 12 murders that happened in your bedroom. <laughs> Uh, I didn't mention that. Uh, I always forget that. <laughs> uh, well, that could be. Yeah, yeah. Well, send her love. You know, if uh, I, I don't know if she's sometimes when people commit suicide, they get stuck there. But it sounds like she's. Yeah. Send her love. Just be like, you can go. You can go now. Yeah. Everything seems to be cool. Nothing negative has happened. And like you said, she's uh, I believe you said that she was just kind of here to see what was going on because there's. We just moved in not too long ago. This was my childhood home, and there's a lot uh, of new things here, you know, <laughs> from... Yeah. It's been empty for, I don't know, five or six years, so I'm oh, sure wow. that is a drastic change. Yeah. Did you ever see that movie, The Others? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I, I always think it really is like that. People think something's evil because their, their house is being you know, kind of messed with. Mm -hmm. And, but really it's just someone on the other side that's going, who's messing with my house? Like, you know, (laughs) (laughs) and uh, so it's not, so evil is a very different thing than something that is like, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Who's in my house? Who is that? (laughs) So everybody's a little freaked out at that point, but um, yeah. Oh, well that's uh, well, good. I, you know, what's funny when I read, I really don't remember. So I'm glad that story ended well on my part. 
(laughs) (laughs) Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Karen is going to do another tarot reading, and we're going to find out what the new year is going to bring. Cool. Needing help to remove any obstacles or challenges that might be holding you back from success in your business or personal life? Let me help you create a course of action that will take you to the next level personally and professionally with some bad life coaching. And remember, worry about everything. Want to contact the show? Send an email to jason at wedonthavecookies.com or call 929-266-9342 and leave a voicemail. All right, we're back. As I was telling Karen during the break, I really liked what she did on the Karen and Kira Can Read podcast, the cookie party episodes that I mentioned in the beginning of the show. She started off by telling people what number year they were in and what year they were going into next. It was a bit of numerology in there, which was the first I really heard of that. And I was uh, really interested to know what year I'm in. Terrific. And if um, numerology is a very simple but accurate, incredibly accurate way, if people are interested, even um, before tarot, it's very, um, I don't know, I'll, I'll help you. Okay, so people have, there's all kinds of numerology. You can find out what your soul number is. You can find out all these things. I always like to work with people's personal year. So, um, when you work into the year, it changes on your birthday. And, um, for example, my birthday is August 17th. And just so you know, what I would add across, it would be my last birthday was eight 17, 2017. That was my last birthday. So you would sort of take all those numbers and put plus signs between them. So you would go eight plus one is nine plus one is seven. Then you have 16 plus two is 18 plus one is 19 plus seven is 26. And then you add two and six. Now, did that make sense or did I go too fast? No, that made sense. Okay, so if someone's birthday was February 2nd, it would be 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 7. Okay, so my numbers across 2 and 6 mean that right now I'm in a year 8. Cycles in numerology and a lot of times in tarot, tarot goes up to 10, but it goes in a 9. It goes 1 through 9, and each year sort of presents something different. For example, when people are in a 6, that is the year mostly about love and domestic things. Um, it doesn't mean that they won't meet the person they're going to meet in a 5 or a 9, uh, the, you know, the person they're going to marry. But it means in that year 6, that is really what is being presented, and that is when you'll sort of go through an evolution. Like if you're single and you want to get married, that year 6, you'll probably meet more people. You'll probably find more people attracted to you. You'll probably also get straight, hey, wait, maybe I don't want to get married, or maybe I, you know, you'll kind of get it straight in your head. Mm-hmm. If you're in a bad marriage in a year 6, that's probably the year you'll spend split up. And each year kind of has a different thing to it. And I am so happy to be in an eight because eights are very business money, getting your career together. And that has been so true this year, just getting all these things that I never thought I'd be doing for career are now happening in this eight and setting up right away. Next year for me will be a nine because nine comes after eight and (laughs) nines are all about getting rid of everything going away that you don't need. So let's do uh, yours. When is your birthday? June 9th. So June is six, right? Yeah. Six, nine. Okay. So that goes across to 15 and 2017 is a one. So that goes 15 at one that's six, seven. Right. Okay. So let me do that again. Hold on. Six, nine, you said. Okay. 
So six and nine is uh, 15, which is six, add one is seven. Okay, so you are in a year seven, which sevens are very introspective. They are very much, they're a little bit solitary, but they're very much, what am I doing with my life? Where am I? What is my place <laughs> in the planet? You know what I mean? Yeah, you <laughs> that, pretty much sum that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're very, um, uh, so that's kind of what's going on this year. You're fine finding your place. So next year, when you go in your eight, you will be ready to come out of your shell and be like, oh yeah, let's get this moving. Let's get the career going. Let's get, um, eights are kind of almost like, you know, the infinity sign is the eight sideways. So it's kind of like that. Woo. Let's get things moving. Let's get everything equaled out. Um, so next year you'll probably be making career decisions or bringing something in. Just remember it's, it's almost always, I always say they're positive. You know what I mean? If you're in the wrong job, you'll probably lose your job in the eight, which could seem drastic, but it could be the universe going, get to what you're supposed to be doing, get to it right now. So that's the good news. Sevens can be very, um, like I said, solitary and introspective, but eights, I am, I'm a career girl. I am all about the eight. <laughs> it's funny because last time you were on, I had you read to see how the podcast was going. Well, you said that it was going to start getting popular, but it wouldn't really happen until I started to believe in myself enough. And that was going to take a while. And I'm assuming that's probably going to happen around the year eight while I'm in my year seven trying to sort things out. Yeah. Yeah. You know what else you may find? And I really do believe in the law of attraction, which is we all know if you get in your car mad, you're going to have 500 people beeping the horn, cutting you off this and that. If you're in your car singing, what a great day that usually doesn't happen, but really get excited about your eight. I got so excited about this a year eight mm-hmm. that I actually think things started happening before. Like I've like months before I was like, Oh, the universe is just revving up. It's just sending me all this stuff. In fact, I'm afraid of my next birthday cause I don't want it to end. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, and it's funny cause I, I, you know, everything's positive. Everything's got a way, got a good thing to it, but I, I hate, fives. Year fives are about chaos and they're about not knowing what's next. Like, and sometimes, oh, that's great. Look, I found a million dollars. Oh my God. I wasn't expecting to, uh, get a free Lamborghini, whatever it is. Well, I wasn't expecting to meet the love of my life. So fives can be very, but they're very, they can also be like chaos, chaos, chaos. So that's the only year where I really just throw my hands up and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> um, but also, 2018. Okay. There's a huge, I know a little bit about astrology. I don't know a lot, but I, um, I can give you sort of a big vague picture, which most people would go, well, astrology is pretty vague, but there's something (laughs) going on right now. As we enter the year that we are in the age of Aquarius now and all the stuff that the people in the sixties were trying to manifest is coming forward now. Okay. 2016 was the year of purification. And what it was is there was a huge amount of change. There was a huge amount of things going out. There was an enormous amount of people leaving the planet. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you look back in 2016, like a good way to sort of measure that is how many celebrities there was celebrity death after celebrity death after, you know, um, and probably a lot of people are thinking, yeah, in my life, I knew so-and-so passed and -and so-and-so passed. So 2017 was the year of truth where we are, we got our truth in our face. You know what I mean? You really got, this is the cold, hard truth. And 2017 was a hard year. Yeah. Okay. 2018 is where the, I want to say the mask comes off and the transformation happens. Okay. And the police are coming to get me just as I say, <laughs> this is secret information <laughs> that the police are coming to get. Okay. There they went. They're getting someone else. Okay. Where 
you, you know, you act one way with your family and you act the other way with your wife and then you act a different way with your coworkers. And this is all sort of like, hey, let's keep everyone pleased and let's, uh, or you want to get mad at something and you stuff it down. And then you think, I would love to scream, stop that at my neighbor, but that's unneighborly. So I'm not going to do that. This year, the mask comes off and the people that we really are is going to come out. Right now, we're sort of being presented with our shadow side. Okay, so if a lot of people had a hard Christmas or they had a hard are are having a hard time right around now, our shadow side is kind of the bad parts of us that we think we shouldn't. Here come the police again. What the heck is going on? Good God. How many people are they arresting? <laughs> this is a bad advertisement for L.A. But, oh, my God, she couldn't even get through a conversation without 17 cop cars going by. Um, so so our shadow side is kind of our darker side. that, Or we stay darker. But you know what? We're all humans. We all get mad. We all are upset about things. We all have judgments. And they are all the ones that we say, oh, we shouldn't say that. We shouldn't do that. So it's kind of smacking us in the face right now. Karma and things are all sort of coming to roost right now. But when these masks come off, instead of being the person that our parents want to see or our spouse wants to see or the people we're going to see, it's all sort of becoming just the person that you're supposed to be. Okay. So there's going to be this strange transformation this year. I know I had a dream the other night and I woke up. It was so clear to me what my insecurity is. Like people always say comics need attention. They need this. And I was always like, that doesn't quite resonate with me. I do like attention, but you know what I mean? You know how there's yeah. an insecurity that we're trying to fill? Mm -hmm. And it was clear as anything. It was you are worried about disappointing everyone. That's, wow. And I got it. Like I woke up like that and I was like, that's it. Because I, I would rather step back and not partake rather than that. I need your approval. I need your approval. Mine is more, I can't take the disappointment if you don't like me. So that was sort of a transformation. One mask was off. Wow, that's pretty uh, pretty heavy there. Yeah, I guess so. But I think there's worse masks coming. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was sort of the nice one. And then I better be ready for more horrible things about myself. <laughs> well, you said something earlier that I want to go back to. Uh, it's right when we came back from break, you mentioned something called a soul number. I've never heard that term before. What is that? For anybody that wants to get a book on this, I, there's a book called um, Numerology and the Divine Triangle. And they can just Google numerology and start to get this. There's a personality number. There's a soul number. There's a life number. I think your soul number, um, your soul number, I'm a number one. So that would be, say, take my birthday, eight. 17, 1965. So we add eight and one is nine. 17 is six. Add one is seven. Wait, wait, wait. I lost my number. Hang on. I bet I might need a calculator for this. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I know that I'm a, a one. So everybody has a soul number, a personality number. In fact, there's even numbers you get to your name. There's specific number numerology for each letter and for your name. Um, and there was a friend of mine that's a really great numerologist, and he does numerology every day for what <laughs> what chakra he needs to pay attention to, so what color he should wear. Oh, and wow. I know, isn't that interesting? <laughs> Some people are going, I can't do that. First thing in the morning, I can't. Okay. So that's eight plus one is nine plus seven is 15. Thank you. Okay. So one plus five is six plus one is seven. I hope no one turns on the podcast now because they'll be like, this is the most boring. <laughs> She's just adding. <laughs> so that's 16. Oh, wait. So nine. So that's 16. Okay, so I think that's it. When you do your birthday, so mine is 8-17-1965, you add that across, I am a one, okay? Ones are about being very independent, 
about being the leader, about uh, bossy, if you couldn't tell that by now, <laughs> about being bossy. Um, they are a lot of show business people. They are they push themselves kind of like that. But it's really an independence thing. And that's what a year one also is. So uh, maybe we could figure out yours. I didn't Did want to you interrupt you while you were trying to count. But maybe that's your spinoff <laughs> podcast, Karen and Kira Can Count. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's Karen and Kira Can't Count is what it sounds like. <laughs> that sounds like more fun. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but uh, but yes, but that so that's my soul number. So you um, add, can you add your birthday? Across? I'm going to make you do it now. Let me get my calculator out. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I should have sure done. I don't mess something up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it came out to 39. Okay, and you add 3 and 9, and that's 12. Yeah. And then 1 and 2 is 3. Okay, so you're a 3. Okay. Okay, so 3s are actually, um, there's a lot of things about 3s. Uh, that are, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Holy Trinity, things come in threes. So it's a very rhythmic number. When someone is in a three, like this, your lifetime, mm -hmm. is a little bit about finding your tribe, finding your people, who are my people. Um, it's about groups. Threes are very creative, and they're very good at bringing people into their creations. Okay? Um, so, and the more you look up, you can Google your um, life number three and see what that brings up. I'm not that familiar with, uh, I know a three mostly as a year, which is kind of the same thing, but yeah, that's, so you are a three. Well, the last time you were on, you read the, uh, the thing that I was talking about with the podcast earlier when we came back from break. So I don't want to ask you the same question twice, okay. but, I'm going to kind of narrow it down, if that makes sense. So it's technically sure. maybe the same question, but I was wondering <laughs> what's in store for the We Don't Have Cookies podcast in 2018. All right. Let's see. Let me shuffle that up. And I'm putting a little light from my third eye chakra to yours. Did you feel it? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 2018, what are you bringing? I hope it's good. <laughs> Actually, it does look really good, though. Oh, Hold good. on a sec. Okay. Actually, it looks very good. And I have to say, by the end of the year, uh, or I don't know if you're doing this now, but by the end of the year, you should look for a sponsor. Do you okay. have a sponsor? Not right now. That should be on your agenda, and I want you to start thinking about it now. Okay. So when you go into that year eight, I want you to think about it, even if it's a trade off or it's a but get it started, something about a sponsor. OK, okay. it also looks like I am going to put money on this year eight for you. Set your sights high. This is part of the believing in yourself for the last one. There's something that seems to be clicking at the end here that puts it into a different mode. OK, into a higher gear in 2018. I kind of feel like there's an energetic shift in you, okay? And I don't know why in particular that might be an astrology thing or something like that because your two cards from the past are kind of showing me, I'm going to say neutral, like I've done what I want to do and I'm doing it, but I'm not sure what the next step is. 2018 brings new energy and it also brings your challenge card is action, and what I mean by that is, like, what is the next step? So I do these, but is the next step a sponsor? Is the next step a podcast um, convention? Is the next step asking a bigger guest than I'm used to? Okay? Mm -hmm. um, but really think about what that is and do it with no limit. This is hysterical, but it really does have to do with it. I have a chair in my house where I meditate, and then I have another chair that I call the chair of no fear. <laughs> <laughs> and I sit in this chair when I write so that I will not edit. I sit in this chair when I make plans so that I will not put a ceiling lower than I need. And that's what you need to do for next year is what is the next thing and start taking these risks one at a time, even if they're like emailing someone 
that you don't think would be on the podcast. One thing a day that takes you out of your comfort zone and something is going to start moving and it actually may cause a little bit of a panic. And that could even be, oh my God, I asked someone and they said yes. And then it may, you know what I mean? Like there's this place now where you're going to have to start facing our inner fears. That's your mask coming off. Okay. And that may cause a little bit of panic and then it may work. It may not, whatever it is, or you might even be like, oh my God, I can't believe I got a response from so-and-so, okay? But towards the end of the year, something seems to move quickly and move into space, and it's coming up as money. So I also kind of have this feeling that you may want to take on a pet project, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, And that may be a theme or something hey, once a month we talk about this or we, like, say you took on an, uh, hey, let's talk about the environment, which I I don't think you should. That's boring. But, (laughs) (laughs) and you go like, hey, every fourth podcast, we're going to kind of have this reoccurring thing that happens. But think about that. If you could bring change to the planet and you had the biggest podcast in the world or change to someone, you know, whatever that is, what would it be? And start to incorporate it now. Because I feel like there's a little bit of a honing down that's going to come, whatever that is. But I kind of feel like watch that year eight and watch things shift. And that starts on my birthday, right? Yep. Well, I have one last question, and that has to do with another project that I'm going to be starting soon. I've been really nervous about it, and I haven't done anything like this before. And I want to know if things are going to work out with the Brolin Alley podcast that I'm going to start doing. Okay, let's look at that. All right. Okay. Is this guy a comic? No, he should be. Uh, He's a former pro wrestling manager. Oh. Okay. All right. There is um, for the first thing I have for this is either a delay or maybe not quite. I just going to say a delay. I'm going to leave it on delay. Okay. Okay. But I have to say two things about this. Um, This is landing not only in a very nice place for you, but this has something to it. And again, I'm going to refer to this year eight where this project starts In 2018, I know this sounds time-wise off, but you will understand this later. It is going to start off in 20, after it's going for a while, which is probably, I don't know, I'm saying your year eight, this could be his timeline I'm looking on. It's almost like it begins to really find its way at that time, okay? Mm -hmm. So in other words, it starts off, It's not going to start off with a bang. It's going to start off with a delay and then start to move. But there's a place that it's getting to that is a fabulous place of growth, which is what you want. Okay. And that is when what it is and what it will be are two different things as it moves. Mm -hmm. But um, I really like this. Um, There's going to be some writing with it. And some comedy with it, whatever the project (laughs) is, Mm -hmm. um, those two cards came up immediately. And it almost seems like, okay, so I don't know if you said podcast. You're doing a podcast with him, correct? Or it's a project. It's uh, This is why I'm I'm really worried about it. It's going to be more of a um, a video podcast that they do that's YouTube only. So I don't know if that's technically a podcast, but. Oh, Okay, that makes sense. But there will be more production to it. Yeah. Okay, that's the part that's going to grow and change, and that's the part that's really cool. Okay. Okay? I really like this, but it will have some evolutions, um, but I that's why there's more production to it. Don't be nervous about it at all. You're absolutely moving in the right direction. Okay, and me and Kenny are going to stay friends. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, I, yeah, I don't have any, I don't have any, uh, <laughs> I don't have anything horrible happening. Oh, I have it good. coming, coming in, like I said, it's sort of moving into its beginning, okay, which then you can call me at that time when you go, okay, I know what you were talking about, that there's a beginning that wasn't the start, and then we'll pick this up again. Okay, that was the part I was worried about. Kenny's a good friend of mine. I love him to death. But the uh, the last year, most people haven't made it to uh, – uh, the last person who's been his co-host lasted six weeks. Everybody else was two or less. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> so making sure that we're going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, I kind of have that as okay. But take get rid of don't worry about what's around there. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I, I – I have the best producer and he's always right. He's always like, remember what is intriguing to watch is drama. Yeah. So if there's a little drama, okay. you know, brush it off. Um, yeah. But I see, but I also do see it evolving into a different place. Is there a woman on it too? Maybe you're thinking of Maya. That's his daughter-in-law. Me and her get along really well. She does the intros for the show and things like that. Uh, okay. For, she for my may, podcast. Okay. She may be become more active in it. Okay. I can see that because the three of us, we have really good chemistry together, but we've only done it on my podcast. We've never done anything together on his. Yeah. No, no, no. I kind of like this. Yeah. And somebody else is doing all the production. So that's nice for me. I just show up oh. and, and uh, try to make sure that my house looks clean. I'm, I'm working on trying to make a set, but we'll see how that goes. Maybe that's the part that's coming up. Yeah, yeah, that could be. Yeah. But this is no, I kind of like this. I also really feel like not to say where you're starting, but what you think this is going to look like right now that has a little worry around it. Let mm -hmm. that go. Okay. Um, because it's, it's going to look like not exactly like what you think it's going to look like. And that's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is this going, uh, I don't want to keep adding on to this, but is this going to lead to something else for me in addition to that? Let's take a look. I know that it will bump your podcast. Maybe that's why I'm seeing something changing in, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Okay. Will it lead to something else? Uh, you know what? There is something there, and I, it's very interesting. This is going to go kind of far out, but I think you're going to end up working with his daughter more. Oh, okay. Like maybe you and his daughter are the podcast. Oh. She keeps showing up. I That's... think she's been underestimating her value or her opinions. You know, I could see that because every time me and her have a conversation for whatever reason, it's never under two hours. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> why. <laughs> and that's why I told her I couldn't do a podcast with her because it would be way too long for anyone to listen to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you set a bell and you have to end when the bell comes, but um, there's something to that. Um, yeah, I do think you're going to get something from this. I do really see it pumping up your pot, your other, your own, this podcast. Uh -huh. Then you'll be too big to have me on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that happening. Karen can do a tarot card reading for you too. Just go to KarenRontowski.com. That's K A R E N R O N T O W S K I.com and click on the book reading button. It's right at the top of the home page. I'll have a link to that in the show notes. And Karen, is there anything else you want to promote before you go? Uh, yeah, if they want to subscribe, I'll let everybody know when my podcast is coming out, hopefully end of January and uh, Paranormal Karen on YouTube, little one minute humorous videos about haunted places I have gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, they come out every Friday. <laughs> If you take this little piece of advice, then you shouldn't come to any harm. Never ever put a snooze button on a smoke alarm. Before I end the first episode of 2018, I want to throw out three New Year's resolutions that I made for the podcast and talk about a few other things that have to do with the show. This year, I'm hoping to keep the podcast schedule without missing a show. It'll be the very first year I've ever done that. <laughs> I talked about it briefly a few episodes ago, but I'm currently working on recording some fun shows to put out just in case I get sick or something comes up. 
Next, I'm going to do my best to bring in more guests and more segment contributors this year. I love having a cast of rotating regulars, and I still plan on having regular monthly guests, but I also want to bring in a lot of new guests on the show. And in the past couple of episodes, I've been having multiple guests on different episodes, and I think that makes the show a lot more fun, so I'm planning to do a lot more of that too. The last one has to do with the podcast, but it's also a personal goal, and that is to take better care of myself, because a happier, healthier me means a better show for all of you. So trying to get more sleep, eating right, things like that, uh, we'll see how it goes. I <laughs> I think last time Karen Rontowski was on, I asked her if I'm ever going to get enough sleep someday, and <laughs> that was one of my tarot questions. And as you heard on this episode talking to Karen Rontowski, I am going to be the new co-host of Kenny Bolin's podcast, The Bolin Alley. I can't say too much about it right now, but Kenny is going to be doing a Facebook Live on January 2nd around 7 or 8 p.m. Eastern. He'll be addressing the controversy with the network that his show has been on for the past couple of months, where the show will go in 2018 and taking any questions that you might have. If you're listening to this after January 2nd, you can watch the replay on his wall. I'm sure it'll still be there. The last thing I want to talk about is that I've decided to put the podcast out once a week instead of twice a week. So it'll be out every Monday. And when I can, I'll throw a bonus episode up on Thursday. But with adding more guests to each episode and doing Kenny's podcast a couple of times a month, I've just got a lot on my plate. And I don't want the podcast to suffer because of that, so I think the best thing to do is try to scale it back for a little bit. And who knows? Um, hopefully it'll be back to twice a week soon. I would really enjoy that. But maybe it's better if it's just once a week. Who knows? We're going to find out together. <laughs> so I want to make sure everybody knows what's going on. Well, that's it for this episode. I want to wish you all a happy new year. Thank you for listening and making last year so much fun. <laughs> listening. Tell your friends about the show and leave a review. See you next time. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you about the 12 murders that happened in your bedroom. <laughs>